2016. During your time as a student, did you feel any type of undercurrent of entrenched racism on campus? As a former student athlete here, I did not uh, experience any racial uh, uh, issues here, but I, I did also see some. In 2012, there was an incident at the Black Culture Center where uh, someone threw cotton uh, all over the Black Culture, uh, cotton balls all over the Black Culture Center, and nothing was done about it, but only an email was sent out. There have been other issues here as well that has not have been addressed, and it's time for someone uh, to to get pretty much do something about it, and that's what this all this is all about. So my Yo! Welcome to Under the Influence Cocktails and Consciousness. This is a critical thinking platform where we talk about issues that are important to the black community and then some issues not so important. As you know, those issues are sometimes hard to handle. So we handle it with a cocktail. It's your man Caleb in the house and joining me as always, the very lovely, isn't she lovely? <laughs> Ivory. Hi. Hey. All right, so we're coming at you right now with a, uh, this episode is going to be about the Missouri University. I don't know if it's a scandal. I don't know University if of Missouri. The University of Missouri. Mizzou. Uh, Mizzou. Mizzou. I don't know if we call it a scandal, if we call it a, uh, a mishap, a tragedy, a, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's not a situation. Protest. Yeah. So basically what happened down there is there's a lot of uh, a lot of fuckery going on, there's a lot of racism going on down there, uh, according to many of the students, uh, including the student body president. All right. And so what happened is this string of uh, racism basically caused one of the students uh, who is a part of an organization. I believe the name of the organization is uh, 1950 uh, Concerned Student 1950. And what? that's the name of the organization. It was called concerning student 1950 i believe and that's the part of, that's the organization he, he's a part of but he did a hunger strike uh it lasted a week. it just ended today because of course we know the president of that school mr wolf the big bad wolf was fired all right so let's talk about it he man. wasn't fired he resigned he got pushed out look see yeah. look you know what happens he got pushed out he got fired okay they they gave him the etiquette, but I feel like if he was resigning and stepping down, that's the real deal. They would have fought it, then it probably would have lasted longer. It lasted longer. Well, the protest would have lasted longer. The back and forth, like if he would have stayed. I don't know, was, it a, was it a protest or a hunger strike? Well, it was a hunger strike, but there were also like groups of other black students, including the athletes that uh, decide like not protest in terms of going out there marching or, but. Uh, choosing to opt out of being students anymore because they did not like the culture of the university. So they opted out of doing things until this president of the, the university was no longer the president anymore. Now, all I'm saying is that he could have chose he could have chosen to fought to have fought back or defended his position, but. He, he did just, you know, say, you know what, I'm throwing a towel and I'm going to step down. Admittedly, I'm sure he had pressure. Of course. But he could have fought back. He could have fought back, but I mean, it's gonna, the kid's going to go, he's going to starve to death. I mean, that's that was, I feel Not like. Not him, the president. I know, but I'm saying that kid would still be on hunger okay, strike right so, now. Okay, gotcha. So he couldn't do that, I mean, right? That would really be racist. We already in the line left. <laughs> <laughs> racism right but look my part is this right this is what i really want to get to right because this is where it, you know the straw broke the camel's back for me personally is when michael sam for those who know who michael sam is michael sam is the star the former star uh i don't i think he played defense linebacker or something like that of the missouri tigers i believe the tigers University of yeah, Tiger, yeah, and I believe you know he yeah he was and he went to the NFL, and he actually came out openly gay, um, and he went to the NFL, and I, I believe that's one of the reasons why he was kind of he actually was sucked honestly he wasn't that good of a football player when he in the NFL, 
Yeah, but I mean, it's not the fact that he's gay. I mean, we don't really care about the fact that he's gay. I mean, because that. that and why really mention it? Because that's who. If you say people know, oh, that's that guy. They, you know, people be like, oh, that's Michael Sam. I'm not trying. You know what I mean? All they do is look up his name. All right, fine. You already said it. No, but see, but that has something to do with my whole point, also. Okay. But why should? Because it? let me tell you why. Okay, now listen to me. Listen to me. I have, you know, look. All right, so. Michael Sam, he said that he didn't experience any racism while he was at Mizzou. Now, he said he did see some racism, which means you if you saw with your own two eyes, nigga, that means you experienced it. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he was just kind of nervous or if he's just not good at interviews and something like that. But like right. that's you experiencing racism, family. All right, because believe me or not, you probably got some type of trauma from it, whether it shows up now or later, fam. But that, that's real. But um he came out and said that uh, he didn't experience racism. And like I told you before, he was the star athlete in Missouri. Nigga, that's why you didn't experience racism, okay? From athlete to athlete, all right? Let me tell you, when I wasn't, you know I mean? I wasn't like, you know, even, even an athlete of, like a, a huge university like that. But it's universal, all right? It's universal from all levels. That's the way it is, all right? Even as cat in high school, grammar school, this is how it works. For black kids, all right, and for little black kids out there, I hope you're listening too. When you're good at sports, you're supposed to be good at sports, all right. Actually, there was a quote by an old bookie back in the day in the 90s named Jimmy the Greek, and he actually got in trouble for saying this. But he said that, yeah, all blacks are good at sports because. It's from slavery, you know. They used to take the big slave and, and and breed it with the big the big female slave and have have a big old ultra big slave or some shit like that. You know what I mean? He got kicked off ESPN and his life was in ruins after that. But there was truth to that, and that's probably what people were scared of, and that's what's happening today. All right, so little kids, you're supposed to be good at sports in, in the eyes of the rest of the world. All right, so it, it's no surprise that you. You have a, a very unique experience when you're an athlete growing up. All right, but let me tell you, let me tell you something though. That bubble was definitely busted when you're not an athlete anymore because you know they, for the most part, mainstream. You know, they we can't really compete with these people. Like, like you say, Jimmy the Greek said they were kind of like destined for this shit. They were kind of like created for this shit. Really, I believe it was his name. Uh, I forgot his name. Vince Young. He was, used to be a quarterback back in the day. He got in, he said some crazy shit back in the day. Like I was bred to be the quarterback of uh, <laughs> Texas University. Like nigga, what? Oh, wow. Yeah, he was out there. His mind was gone. But like, there's some truth to that, you know? Yeah, it is. So, like, <clears throat> that's the thing. You make these people lots of money, okay? Especially in this day and age of like college sports. You guys have like the all these bowl games and shit like that that you were playing in. That's why they liked you, Michael Sam. All right, that's why you didn't experience racism. If all the kids out there, that's why you're not experiencing racism right now. All the kids are getting ready to play basketball season, get ready to start football season happening right now. You probably the man on campus. You probably got all. You probably got getting all the love from everybody. That's because you're supposed to be an athlete. All right. It's not because they like you. I wouldn't say it's because they like you because I don't think they like the person. I think that they like what that person is able to do for them which is keep them entertained, which is put money in their pockets, all these things that athletes do. So they can care less about the person. They, what they care about is their talent and their ability. So I, I wouldn't say they like them. I would say that they like what that person is able to provide. In the moment that you're not able to do that anymore, they're not, they are going to forget about you. So they don't like you. They like your skill set. Right. That's a, that's a huge difference. They're like a superhero. Like damn, wow. you're not human. You're an illusion. Like you are, um, superhuman. Do the jersey on. <laughs> Do the jersey. Even football, y'all even got y'all don't even see, you can't even see y'all face. That's why I don't play football. I'm gonna play basketball. I'm like yo, I, I like I don't right, guys, they gonna see they me. gonna see me. Damn it, you gonna see me smile. Everything is so fucking. You can't even see you You can't see your face in football, fam. But look, but but my second but point. The, clearly, they got covered their heads with all the energy. In, yeah, I mean, they would have to, but even then, it don't work. It's a movie coming out with Will Smith now talking about concussions. Like, yeah, and that's real. And that's real. 
Michael Sam. That's probably why his ass was the talking about that crazy shit in like, the interview like that. Because he was like, he had a damn concussion or something. It's probably why he's talking like that. Like, yeah, I've never seen. Uh, he he sounded like Rick J. Okay. You know, Rick J. He's like, uh, he's like, no, Eddie Murphy ain't never do nothing to me. He was like, like, yeah, did he did it to me? But, he, he, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but look, it's my second point. My second point is this. Michael Sam, if y'all saw when he got drafted, Michael Sam's boyfriend was white. Okay. Right. I'm not even talking about that. Well, I'm not the you fact that look, not the fact that it's not the fact that his boy that is is gay. I'm talking about this. It's not the Okay, cool. But look. This is the group he was talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's back in the, the day. Star student, 1950. 1950, yeah. Yeah, go check that out, man. That's historical. It's basically the first day it's been alive. That group on Mizzou has been around since the first black student enrolled. So that's that's dope there. But um, yeah. So think about this. He has a let's take away let's take away the whole sexuality part of it. He has a white significant other. That can make you sometimes be, and you know, a lot of times they try to take up for that. Like that's you know what I mean, and I don't have a problem. Or I don't have a problem per se. I don't do it with interracial dating and whatever. But it's like yo, you still gotta know. You can't let that be a filter. It can't be your filter that you see life. Yeah. That can't be like oh well no because no 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 nigga because everybody ain't like that. It ain't like that. Don't be that guy. <laughs> you being vague right now. I'm being vague. I'm, I'm confused. What you mean? It's like it's not like that. Don't be that guy. What does that mean? I'm telling them like don't don't let that just because you have a white significant other, don't oh, start okay. getting on TV tap dancing and shit. Like I ain't see racism, but I, he he did redeem himself though because he kind of did go in like yo you know what I mean, you know I would tell them this and it kind of probably because he's not in the NFL he probably kind of scorned you know what I mean there's a lot of things going on with this. He probably a little scorned because he ain't in the league. You know what I mean? Okay. What is your what is your major issue with um, this guy? The fact that he he, he, he should have said, "Yo, he should know. He should know better by this point." Like, "Yo, I didn't experience racism there because I was an athlete." That shouldn't even be. It shouldn't be like because so like he, he put when he puts yeah, it out there, everybody's not thinking about it, like he's not even a big star no more. Everybody don't see Michael Sam, the football player. People see all the that dude who used to go to Mizzou. And he was talking about he didn't experience racism. Like no, you can't do that. You got to say I was I myself actually was an athlete, so you know that whole thing, and that should be a, a conversation we should be having right now. But that's not something maybe that he's aware of because like, and I would venture to say a lot of athletes are not aware of that until like. They are able to connect the dots and put it together and be like, wow, like I wasn't, I didn't know that this happened until maybe after the fact. Like, That's cool. That's why we're making them aware right now. Right. So, what? So, you know, you can't be mad at what a person doesn't know. So, is the issue the fact that he came out publicly defending like something that is not his experience across the board? Like, he's, def he's basically saying, like, it wasn't racist because I didn't experience racism, but that doesn't mean it wasn't racist just, just because you didn't experience it. And the fact you didn't experience it is because you were an athlete. I don't know. Look, we got a lot of double conscious going on with man Michael Sam because he actually brought the hunger strike guy some water. He said he brought him some water. That's good. So that's good. That's what I'm saying. So it's right. like he understands something. But to, so but to say that, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe he don't know everything. But that's something major you should know. He's trying to play it safe. Yeah. And I think it has something to do with his significant other being white. I don't know. So I say that to say this, people. Make sure your people are down with us, man. They gotta be down like Dolo's all down, <laughs> damn there. That's to be pound. Oh, that's what that, like, hashtag that shit. Pound sound, no, pound 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 sign. Dolo's all down. That's a, <laughs> that's a person who doesn't want to be their race, and so they try to take on another race. Like, no. She better have a dashiki, yo, damn it. If you rock it with her. Tell Kathleen you put on her daishiki. <laughs> or uh, Brian, well, in his case. <laughs> but yeah, all right. So that's that's us, man. We just uh, felt like you know, I really, I really feel like getting out there, you know. And so you, I'm still confused. I'm still not even convinced that you really have a problem with this man. So I'm just like I don't have a problem with him. 
So what is the point? I just had to make that point, you know, that athletes don't experience racism. It's true. But it's because of the whole construct that they see you in. Nigga, if you was if it was a rapper, if like they had if they had a rapping team, if every university had a rapping team, nigga, where everybody had a DJ Mm -hmm. and and they had a start a start to file of uh, rappers and shit, like they wouldn't get discriminated against either. But as soon as they became like fifty or seniors or something like that. He was like, no, you nigga ain't rapping no more? Right. You try to write what? You try to you try, you say you try to be an engineer? Right. Nigga, hell dog. <laughs> that's what we wanna do. Fuck that. So that's what it comes down to. <laughs> Alright, get it. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been another episode of Under the Influence Cocktails and Consciousness, man. This is Caleb and Ivory, and we have enjoyed having you. We hope you've enjoyed having us in your home. All right. In your earbuds or in your, in your audio, whatever. Don't forget to like this video, share it, subscribe. Later. Bye.